All right, welcome to today's show. Introduce yourself, please. Hey guys, my name is Robin. I am a young guy from Belgium who got stuck here with my girlfriend. All right, and where are we right now? So we are in Tamarkt, if I... Tamracht. Tamracht. Um, so at the beach, which is great. My girlfriend and me have been stuck in Marrakesh for the last five months, so just seeing the sea is like... Epic. Welcome. Yeah. Much cooler air over here. Um, yep. What brought you to Morocco in the first place? So my girlfriend and me were going to work at Tomorrowland Winter, a festival in the French Alps. Um, and then like before Corona even came to Europe properly, they were like, so the whole world's going to gather at that festival, so we're going to cancel it. We worked really hard to be able to work over there. So we were like, okay, let's just book a small holiday. We took the Corona map literally and we were like, what country is warm, cheap and has no Corona? So Morocco popped up first. We wanted to come here for quite a while actually because we wanted to climb Tupkal. But we're like, let's just start by going to Morocco, rent the car and do like a random road trip. Um, so that's how we came here, yeah. And when was that, January or February? March. March. Yeah, so the beginning of March. Okay. And beginning of March, you arrived in Morocco in, into Marrakesh? Yeah, into Marrakesh. That's it. We stayed in Marrakesh for one day and then we ran to the car. And we had no plan, actually. We just wanted to see mountain desert sea. That was the plan. So we went through the atlas to uh, Mohamed Gizlan, to the Ashigaga Sahara Desert. And then while we were in the desert, Morocco went into a lockdown, so we kind of missed out on that until we came out. <laughs> it was a really weird situation. Everything was closed, so we just tried to get something to eat. And a guy we met just before the road trip told us, you can come to Marrakesh and stay at my place until you get a plane. Plane didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> plane didn't happen. Were there planes or you decided to stay? Uh, no, so there apparently there were planes, but it was close to impossible to get on to one. The Belgian government wasn't really helping. They were sending people like all over Morocco. Um, like they sent a lot of people to Tangier to get a boat. The boats were not even, like, only Spanish and French people were allowed on the boat, so a lot of Belgian and Dutch people got stuck there. They sent the people to airports to catch planes. The planes were already full, so nobody got there, so they got stuck in different cities. Um, and we knew we wouldn't be able to get on a plane, so we stayed in Marrakesh. Yeah, we yeah. tried to, to book some, but all of them were booked or we weren't allowed on them, so... Stuck in Morocco. Stuck in Morocco. Duh, duh, duh. That's how it started. I knew another Belgium guy here, and he had the same situation. It was hard for him to get a plane. He was stuck here. I know a uh, Moroccan who lives in Belgium, and same thing. He's still here. I think he's leaving soon, but they really struggled uh, getting people back to Belgium. It yeah, seems. Belgian government was really like, they did a lot of publicity in the Belgian news, how they brought everyone back, but... <laughs> they knew more than us in Belgium, like, we didn't see any planes, we didn't get any mails. The only contact we had with the embassy was two mails that rejected us from getting a flight back. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's all we heard of them, they didn't pick up the phone, they didn't answer mails, nothing. But in the Belgian news, they said they were answering all the mails and picking up the phone, so... There's different stories going around, you know? Always some fake news, yeah. we've learned that with Corona <laughs> here, right? Eh? That's it. So you come out of the desert, find out you're in lockdown, you're in Marrakesh, and uh, you spent Ramadan there. Yeah, we did the full Ramadan, so we did the fasting, not eating, not drinking. Really? Yeah, we did the full thing. It wow. was a really awesome experience to everyone who hasn't experienced this yet. Like, just do it once in your life for the sake of valuing your food and and just getting into a really healthy relationship with with your mental self you know just realizing that you don't need everything you think you do and and coming back to like i said really the value of food food isn't just a normal given thing mm -hmm. some people don't have it you know understandable it's yeah. uh it reminds us of uh yeah the poor in this time and yeah. uh helping those out so it's uh Really great experience, Ramadan. I made it one day myself. I, <laughs> I guess I'm a bit weaker mentally, but from what I understand, 
you have a passion for CrossFit, and that was yeah. uh, like Anya, favorite on the channel. Her roommate was a CrossFitter. Did you find a struggle to work out? Did you find a gym in Marrakesh? So we were in a residence, and I don't know how it was here, but in, in Marrakesh, at least one person per building had uh, permission to go to the street. We were living with someone who had the permission, and we didn't. So we didn't really come out for three months. Like We were in the house, in the residence. So working out was difficult. Uh, luckily we had a pool, so I did a lot of swimming. We practiced some movements, some handstands of stuff. But I'm going to be honest, it was difficult to, to keep motivated to move like I was <laughs> used to do before. So yeah, working out was like on a low culpit. We call it the freshman 15 in America when you go to college or university and you gain weight, like living in the dorms and partying, yeah. and people would make jokes about the quarantine 15 pounds. So I guess that's like six, seven kilos that you gain just uh, being at home, I guess, not leaving. Yeah, I don't know if I gained weight, but my, <laughs> let's say my body composition didn't change for the good, that's true. Like, <laughs> um... A little more fat. What were you eating Moroccan food-wise? What was some of your favorite Moroccan dishes you had at this time? Oh, Iftor meals or... Like, Tangia is all the way on top of the list, you know. Where we're in Marrakesh and it's like the big local dish. Like, just meat, slow cook it for hours on end. Uh, most people do it like in a stone vase under the hammam. Hammams were closed, so we had to do it on a fire. Yeah. But it was still insane we were really lucky the guy we stayed with Hisham he's like a crazy cook his best friend has a restaurant as well and he learned a lot from him and like I'm so grateful he learned mamon to cook Moroccan <laughs> like I was there to eat I'm gonna be honest but we had really really nice Moroccan dishes throughout the whole quarantine yeah his Beautiful. mom made some couscous as well so like Good the mother's couscous. couscous in Morocco, it's like... It's number holy. one. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's mom cooks the best couscous. That's it, for say. sure. Yeah, I enjoyed... Uh, you have a YouTube channel, Travel with Melon, your girlfriend. Yeah, travel with Melon. Melon. And uh, I really enjoyed seeing some of your acro you're doing and things like that. So I, I felt we had this common band that we were both doing these YouTube videos stuck in Morocco. And that yeah, we both had this passion for fitness and Yeah, movements. for movement. That's it. I really like to see that. Um, and that time in quarantine gave us time to really focus on these practices, which has yeah, been Yeah, that's it. There was no gym, so we just did silly stuff in and around the pool. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest thing with every practice is just learning through having fun. And let's take off the seriousness for a couple of months and just explore, you know. And that's exactly what we did. And it's so much fun, you know. Great. Yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Um, next question for you is, you finally left Marrakesh, you came to Tamrat, Agadir. What were your impressions in the region when you first saw the sea, first saw Agadir? Oh my god. So we came to Agadir. I'm going to be honest. Um, it's less pretty than Marrakesh for me. Like mm -hmm. I love the colors in Marrakesh and everything. Of course, we didn't really get the chance to explore Agadir, so my my opinion is really biased on like the twenty minutes I was there. Mm -hmm. So I need to go back and explore that that place. But the sea, like five <laughs> months in a city, we had an awesome time. But Marrakesh is not really a naturey place, so. Seeing the sea was an emotional thing, you know, it was really good, especially then as we took a cab over here, we had no idea what to expect, we, like, we knew we were going to meet you, but we knew each other from YouTube, but still something like, yeah. who are we going to meet, you know? Yeah. Um, and just to drive over here, just past the sea, we come here to this small village, Ibrahim took us to like a really remote uh, beach as well immediately Tiffany, did, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The, day, the day after um, we had some acro yoga on the beach like we love totally love this place we fell in love with the entire vibe the people the yeah the 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 laid back lifestyle you know it's yeah. completely different than Marrakesh yeah Marrakesh very beautiful city I believe it means city of God and it's got the mountains in the back it's set in the desert so be beautiful place I don't know what Agadir means exactly, 
But it's it doesn't have that history. Well, it has history, but it's destroyed by an earthquake, so everything in there is very new. Um, but I, I find the beauty in the region in the, the sea and the landscapes too. Yeah, so. that's it, you know. You don't need pretty buildings if you have more than buildings. Yeah. You know, Marrakesh has buildings and here you just have the nature and it's it's amazing. Yeah. Even the air you can like breathe in and not stop breathing in for a minute. <laughs> a little exaggerated, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful air here, fresh. That's it. And, um, yeah, so I'm trying to think. Do you have anything else to add here to um, final last words? The decor is failing. Oh, the decor is failing. Don't, don't. It's okay. It'll be fine. Scoot the pillow yeah, over. Yeah. All good. All good. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I'm really glad I met you guys. For sure, like... Um, it's not every day you get invited through someone you just meet on seeing the videos on YouTube and we're really new to this so we didn't really have a lot of experience like this uh, and we were really positively surprised by how nice the entire meeting of everyone was here and just like I said earlier the complete vibe of this place it's just if I would give it one word, it's just happiness. <laughs> like, really, it's just everyone is so well, um, so relaxed, you know? Friendly yeah. people around Friendly here. Friendly people around here, and everyone is really genuine so far, so I love it. We got uh, a great thing going on here. Actually, Tagazoot's faring well with the tourism industry, even with Corona, so that's no. a great thing. Uh, we had a short little interview today, but tell them the truth. You're really just another one of these spies disguised as world travelers. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, guys. Like for the people who watch our channel, like um, actually we're Algerian spies, half Algerian, half USA. Okay. Quarter Russia. Yeah. Uh, KGB, just, CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polisario, all, everything. All that Interpol, like um, okay. a little bit ISIS. That's why I have the beard. I told him that it's the beard that makes you look like. Uh, no, I'm all inclusive. I go <laughs> for the secret services, but also for the terrorist groups. So um, it's been really interesting to see, yeah, like all the places that we can give information about and yeah, <laughs> it's lovely <laughs> yeah, the inside of that house you're locked down at yeah yeah, yeah great yeah. great info uh, <laughs> yeah we found that in common on our youtube channels people comment that we're spies and stuff so this is the spy show welcome to it shorter episodes we're gonna do a double interview today yeah. with uh i spy your partner <laughs> Malone, so thank you for coming on the show today, Robin. And, thank you uh, so much for inviting us. Thank you for watching, everybody. Yeah. See you guys on one of our channels. <laughs> and you can check out their channel, Travel with Melon, and we'll have the link in the description. So yeah. thank you. We have a spy mission to complete, so we got to go, and we'll see you next time. Yo, yo.